So network planning for National Grid ESO is very, very much a long-term concept. When you're looking at the network into the future, you have to consider people's behaviors, you have to consider what's gonna happen and when, and there's a lot of macro things you also need to consider. And if you take a, a long-term view, that means you can get the best things in place at the right time for the consumer. Whilst historically we've been able to plan for winter peak and be confident that the network would be able to operate year round, we're now seeing with the changes on the network that we need to plan for conditions away from winter peak, such as summer minimum, which are presenting new challenges on the network. So we have to make sure that when we're proposing options to reinforce the network, that we're doing so economically and we're considering what costs might be um, to balance the network as an alternative. What we're seeing going forward is you have fundamental shift in how people are using their energy. We're gonna have smart devices, we're gonna have the internet of things, we're gonna have electric vehicles, and all these things are gonna change consumer behavior. So historically demand used to be quite predictable, and um, you're sort of following very similar profiles, whether it's week, weekdays or weekends. Um, we're seeing with advances in technology, with increasing embedded generation, a great shift in, that, in the demand curves, particularly around summer when you've got large solar and embedded wind. You can see your minimum demand being during the day rather than overnight, uh, which presents new challenges to us in terms of the system needs. There's been a change in shift in generation within the industry, moving from um, you know, traditional um, fossil fuels um, towards renewables driven really through government policy um, and environmental targets. That's been a real key um, shift. So we're seeing a change in the distribution of generation across the network. So more generation is being connected at the um, extremities of the system that is actually further away from the demand centres, um, which means that we have to plan the network to ensure that we're transferring that large amount of energy um, long distances, which brings associated challenges. With a big change towards intermittent generation, there are several challenges that we need to focus on. Firstly, it's intermittent. We don't know when it's gonna be windy. In Britain, we don't know when it's gonna be sunny, which means that power is gonna be moving all around the network in ways that we're not familiar with. So one of our key ambitions that we've recently set out is to be able to operate the network carbon-free by 2025. The 2025 target is really, really ambitious. And what we're looking for are participants who can get involved um, in the energy industry, um, provide the, the required services, um, get involved in the, the new markets that may well be created to provide the services that we need to be able to, op to operate the, the uh, transmission network carbon-free in 2025. The National Grid actually comes out with a document every year, which is the FES scenarios, which is the future energy scenarios. And that gives us a way to be able to plan for the future ahead and see how the market moves. Now these look at a broad set of possible outcomes for the future. So we take them and then we say, where would the electricity be flowing in this scenario? And we do that through our ETIS program, which looks at the, the clever technical analysis to say where the electricity is gonna be. And once we have our future energy scenarios and our ETIS outputs, we put that into our NOAA process. The NOAA process makes sure we have the right network in the right place at the right time for the right price.